kind of seamless continuity of awareness. Uh, in that sense, lunch was as much a part of it as everything that's come before this morning, and now we are again. So if you check your watch, you'll notice that it's precisely now. <laughs> so that could be actually a reminder. And let me suggest that, I mean, we're only doing sort of sitting stuff here in part because of the time constraints. Uh, but uh, the real practice is, could be involved movement, playfulness, balance, all sorts of different things. Standing, walking. But for now, why don't we actually imagine, it's a little hard to do in these chairs as opposed to on the floor, but imagine that you're a mountain, you're rooted to the chair and really elevating right out of the base of the rock, of the solidity of your being and the floor and the earth, right up into the air. So you have this very stable base and uh, this lofty peak and the profile of the sides that's uh, uniquely you. And you care to, with the eyes closed, in your mind's eye, picturing a mountain. Maybe one that you love and have climbed, or one that you have seen in progress. And letting your breath and your intention actually unify the body as sitting mountain and the image of the mountain in your heart. Until they become one in you sitting here. Mountains are very, very good at sitting. Night follows day and day follows night and the seasons move the one into the next. And through it all, the mountain just sits. Through all kinds of atmospheric conditions and turmoil and weather patterns and Snow and ice and rain and sleet and hail and sun and warmth and water flowing and birds chirping and flowers blooming. So the appearance of the mountain changes moment by moment as the light changes, as the seasons change. But the mountain in its intrinsic self just sits being what it is. Majestic, massive, and moving. And with, uh, I don't know whether it was clear at least, vast, panoramic. Perspective. So settling now into sense of the body as a whole, mountain-like city. And when thoughts come, just watching move through the field of the mind, the space of the mind, the sky-like space of the mind, you might say, like birds flitting through the sky, coming and going without having to pursue them, without having to reject them, without having to fall into the content of them. And the same for emotions or fluctuations in mood or whatever. The same for sensations in the body, allowing it all to be seasonal and fluctuations and weather patterns that we don't have to identify with as being intrinsically <laughs> us, intrinsically self. And simply as best you can, resting from moment to moment, 
<laughs> in the awareness itself. That, like the boundlessness of the sky or space, can hold anything and everything that arises, pleasant, unpleasant, or neither pleasant nor unpleasant. And so taking up residence or playing with it is taking up fully embodied mountain-like residence in the only moment we ever actually have. At the crossroads of here and now, and allowing yourself to really be at home, just like the mountain. Totally here. Fully awake. Fully who and what you already are. Way beyond name, form, history, story, narrative. this moment, just this breath, just this sitting here with no agenda, just this being human. Just this being human. So keeping in mind, because I think this is the last one of these little interludes that we will have that we're quite interesting mountains because we can dance and we can sing. And as Yates said, we're blessed in everything, everything we look upon is blessed if you're awake enough to see it. And so now we can give ourselves over with, again, seamless continuity. The mountains can open their eyes and uh, take in through this fully multi-dimensional being that we are. And all of our intelligence and everything that's coming forth. The next presentation.